All right, guys. Thank you to everyone who's hopped on today. Uh, welcome, welcome. I kind of wanted to start this training off with a question. We're going to keep this training. Um, it's going to be very informational. We're also going to try to make it a little bit fun because I know sometimes talking about, I mean, we're in insurance. That's the industry that we're in. Sometimes it can get kind of boring, uh, especially when you you know merge in Facebook and advertising and all the technical speak. Uh, so we're going to we're going to try to make it a little bit lighthearted and, and fun as well. So I wanted to kick this question or this uh, presentation off with a question. And that question is, how many of you in the uh, in the chat here have ever heard of a show called SpongeBob? OK, uh, and I want you to actually drop a comment down below if you have. I want to see you know how many people have heard of it or, or seen this little uh, yellow cartoon character that so many you know children have grown up watching and, and fallen in love with. So let's see, I'm waiting for the comments to come in, but I'm, assume, I'm assuming that uh, a lot of you guys have. Uh, but uh, the reason I mentioned SpongeBob is uh, the Krabby Patty, right? And uh, I know, you know, probably a lot of you that have heard of SpongeBob remember the Krabby Patty. But for those of you that haven't, uh, the reason that I mentioned this is SpongeBob worked at a restaurant in the show called the Krusty Krab, and their flagship product was the Krabby Patty, right? And uh, if you remember, the Krabby Patty had a secret formula that nobody else knew except for the owner, right? Nobody else knew what the secret formula was except for the owner and the people that worked there. And uh, if you guys also remember, there was a character in the show called Plankton, right? Now, Plankton, his whole goal was to find the secret recipe to the Krabby Patty. And Plankton would go to, you know, all lengths, no holds barred, anything and everything, to figure out the secret because he knew that once he found the secret formula to the Krabby Patty, prank, uh, Plankton could practically print money, right? Because everyone, everybody loved the Krabby Patty, right? And so, you know, to touch back on what Julian was talking about, <laughs> we kind of like to joke that our competitors are like uh, Plankton. They're, you know, making fake profiles to join our Facebook group and buy our course under pseudonyms and, you know, whatever, block us on social media. You know, it is what it is. No hard feelings. We totally get it. But uh, kind of just like a little joke that we like to have, uh, you know, amongst ourselves. But the thing is, every good recipe has a secret formula. I see Bessie has heard of SpongeBob. That's great. Shannon. So has Shannon. Up. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You guys are definitely in the loop. So that's good to hear. Uh, but today we are actually going to reveal our secret formula, our secret recipe for creating a killer marketing campaign on Facebook. Thank you, Simon. We really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for hopping on here you know, every single week and, and staying engaged with the group. But today, we're, we are going to reveal our secret formula to you guys. So I'd like to welcome everybody that is in the uh, or on the Facebook Live uh, and everyone that's watching this on YouTube at a later date. Welcome to my kitchen. Okay. We're going to start off just with some basic kitchen rules. You know, we don't want a, a madhouse in here. We didn't, you know, we weren't raised in a barn. Uh, we have to have some basic rules in the kitchen. We have to have some etiquette, right? So there's four tenets to uh, to our kitchen, and four tenets to uh, you know what we're gonna do with within the uh, within this live training. Um, and this is kind of it relates back to Facebook ads, and, and I'll explain all of these uh, all these little metaphors here. So the first one is a, a good chef always keeps a clean kitchen. Okay, you need to stay organized. Uh, it's very important that you are able to organize everything within your campaign, right? You need to have your ads in one place. You need to have a structure to your campaign. Uh, and that looks like campaign, ad sets, and ads. And you want to be tracking all of the different numbers, right? The things that are working in your campaigns, the things that are not working in your campaigns, uh, the ads that are getting you leads, and then the ads that you need to kill. Uh, so it's, it's very important to stay organized. Uh, you want to be disciplined with creating campaigns. So you don't want to just like, you know, create one campaign and all, all of a sudden a few hours later, I haven't gotten leads. Let me delete that one and make a new one. You know, we need to, we need to stay clean and we need to stay organized. Number two, you must follow the recipe, right? Um, we lay out step by step what to do at which point, you know, if this happens, then do this. If this happens, then do this. And we have to follow that to a T, right? Facebook is a very, uh, it can be very volatile sometimes with your results. You know, maybe one day I'll get, you know, 10 leads for a dollar each. And the next day I'm getting leads for $10. 
And if I let my emotions dictate my decisions, if I don't follow the recipe, if you know, maybe I throw in an extra ingredient just because I feel like it, then I'm not gonna have good results in my campaign, right? I have to follow a system and I have to follow a recipe whenever I am managing my ads, right? Uh, number three is know your ingredients. Uh, by this, I mean know your numbers. Uh, you need to know what ad is getting you what lead cost, how many leads it's getting you, uh, how many of those leads are converting, how many of those leads are booking appointments. You need to know your numbers uh, and you can track all of those within Facebook. But I would also recommend tracking those, you know, on an external spreadsheet, just so you can kind of look at it, uh, you know, a little bit into the future and, and make uh, macro decisions based off of like the data that you've collected. Uh, the last one is you always need to use fresh ingredients, right? Nobody likes stale tomatoes in their pasta sauce. Uh, nobody likes soggy lettuce on their burger. Uh, you need to cycle your ad creatives, right? So if you've been running one ad for a year and your lead, your lead cost starts going up, uh, that would be why your lead cost is going up. You need to cycle it, right? Um, and I always, especially when you're running and scaling and you're doing larger campaigns, you want to always have some, uh, some ads in the pipeline, right? So I always have my VAs uh, and my design, uh, you know, design team creating ads so that we have something to throw in uh, into our Facebook campaigns whenever we need to. Uh, but it's important to have something in the pipeline and, and always have fresh uh, ad creatives. Cool. So there's five main ingredients when crafting the first bit, uh, the perfect Facebook campaign. We're going to start with number one. And we've touched on this quite a bit uh, in past live trainings, but I'm going to kind of do a quick run through. Uh, this is one of the best performing ads that we've seen in our campaign. Uh, honestly, I don't know why I'm showing you this. I kind of just threw it up here. I may regret it in the future, uh, but this is one of the highest performing ads that we've used in our own Facebook campaigns. And I'm going to kind of break it down for you. Again, this is just the image. Uh, there's ad copy that goes with your ad too, as well as a headline, uh, but the image is the most important part. So the first thing we have here is an attention grabbing hook, right? I have breaking in all caps. I have a shadow behind the text and it's in bold black lettering. That's gonna catch somebody's attention on Facebook. I also have bright colors, right? Yellow pops out uh, on a Facebook newsfeed. This is a very bright yellow. It's, it's very, it's aggressive, right? It's very attention catching. We also have a attractive and colorful image. While, while it, uh, it may not be like the most, you know, happy image or, you know, joyful image, uh, those red roses and the white roses, they really stand out, right? Uh, as well as that casket, the mahogany casket. It, it, it's a very attractive and eye-catching image. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of this image, uh, if you've kind of picked up on that. Uh, <laughs> and then also we have a, a call to action. We just talked about uh, a colorful image. Uh, but now we're now we're, uh, we're talking about colorful language, and the reason I threw that in there is just because how important it is to have a call to action and how much emphasis uh, needs to be put on that. I've seen so many people uh, will you know they'll send me a Facebook message asking me to review their ad or you know what I think of their ad, uh, and there's no call to action in the image. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, right? Am I just supposed to look at it? Am I supposed to scroll? Oh, cool! I need life insurance. Well, great. Let me call the guy you know, that works in my, in my city that has a billboard up that works at State Farm. Like, what am I supposed to do, right? Uh, and it's very clear if you put a call to action in your image. And again, uh, the goal of the image is simply just to get them to click, right? I'm not trying to sell them on an appointment in the image uh, or in the ad. I'm not trying to sell them on a life insurance policy in the ad. I'm just trying to get them to click on it, right? And you want your messaging to be consistent, but there's one action that they need to take when they see this image, and that is to tap on it uh, and ultimately open up number two, which is your instant form. Uh, now, for those of you that don't know, an instant form is just a form that's hosted directly on Facebook, okay? Uh, now, it auto-fills their information whenever they click on it, uh, and they obviously they have to input their information, but it's auto-filled, right? And it's information that they've given Facebook. Now, this is the step that a lot of other people and a lot of our competitors are missing. Uh, this is why their lead costs are so high, uh, and this is why they're just not seeing the same success. And now a big objection that I'll hear whenever I mention instant forms, and I get this all the time, uh, is, you know, but aren't autofills low intent? Now, I put the word no next to this, but I put it in all caps. Uh, I put it in bold. I put it in red. And I made it bigger than all of the other texts on the screen. There's a reason for that, okay? 
And the reason is because it kind of makes me angry when people say this, because if you really think about it, it doesn't make any sense. And I don't say that to be mean or to be rude, but um, it's stopping a lot of people from seeing success uh, and from generating their own leads. Now I'm going to break down and put a little bit of bullet points or a couple of bullet points explaining why this is not true. Uh, number one is you get more accurate information whenever it's directly from Facebook. If I am on Facebook and I click on an ad and it takes me to some sketchy website that you made in five minutes, you know, maybe it's, I'm just going to pick on Johnny Nittafan because I saw him post a comment in there. Uh, it's Johnny Nittafan insurance agent dot info because he couldn't even get the dot com. I'm not going to give them my social security number, my birth date, my address, my email, my phone number, because I know it's going to get sold to everybody and their mom from Nigeria to India to China to back to the US, right? My phone is not gonna stop ringing because they've sold all of my information. When they put it in on Facebook, there's more trust, right? I know Facebook, I'm using Facebook. I've already put my information into Facebook, so why wouldn't I you know, put it in again and submit it on Facebook? Now, even though they're giving you their information, psychologically, because they're on Facebook, they just trust it more. Uh, also, an instant form allows me to collect more information with less friction. Friction is the difficulty that it is for them to take the action you want them to take. If I have to manually type in on you know 14 different um, like text boxes all the information they want from me, that takes a lot of time and I'm going to get irritated doing that. That's a lot of friction. So I'm able to get a lot of data points which I can contact them at. If I know their email, their phone number, one, I can email them, two, I can call them, and three, I can text them. If I have their address, I can even send them direct mail if I want, or I can show up at their house if you're doing face-to-face, -face. or you know, if you're doing telesales and you just wanna do a cross-country road trip and hit all of your leads, which I would not recommend, but you could do. Um, also, people are just lazy, right? They don't wanna type in all of their information, and I'm guilty of this. There's times where I've wanted a car insurance quote, and I've gone to a website, and they ask me, all of these different points of information and they make me manually type it in and I, it almost feels like they're doing it to annoy me right like they're ma they're just making it difficult on purpose and this this comes back to the friction point uh people just don't want to type right they're lazy they want to click and they want to be done with it and that's what an instant form allows you to do and a great example of this is how many i mean okay so yeah i want you guys to type in the chat how many of you have ever bought something on amazon Real quick, just type yes if you bought something on Amazon. Now, I'm obviously expecting a lot of yeses from this because everybody uses Amazon. But if you have bought something on Amazon, uh, how many times have you put in your credit card information on Amazon? Probably just once, right? That's because they're only going to make you type it in one time because they know that it's frustrating to put in your credit card info. You put in your name, your street address, and your credit card info one time on Amazon, and then every time you go to buy something else, it's autofilled, right? So we're already using autofill for everything. Why not use it when you're trying to get insurance, right? So the thing is, uh, autofill is not a bad thing. Also, you can ask uh, questions that they have to manually type. I usually like it uh, like to just keep it to two because any more than that, again, we come back to that friction problem where we're, we're, having, we're making it difficult for them to give us their information. And if I want their information, why would I make it difficult to give it to me, right? We wanna make it as easy as possible to become a lead. Uh, and then also, after they fill out the instant form, there's always one more step. And that's, that's the thing that we do, we, we string them along, right? There's always just one more step. So I filled out the instant form, I've given uh, all the information on Facebook, right? But now there's one more step to see if I qualify, right? Oh yeah, I mean, there's only one more step. Might as well do it. Well, let's see what the step is. And again, uh, the goal right here, this, the uh, animations on the slide just tripped me up, but the goal is to have them fill out the form and get their information. So uh, number three, the one more step is to book an appointment with you. So on the instant form, uh, there's something called a thank you page. Uh, and what that does is once they've filled in their information, you can have like a little headline that tells them something. That's where I'll say, wait, there's one more step. And then in the text below that, I'll say, hey, all you need to do to see if you qualify for this program is to click the link down below, click the button that says, see if I qualify and book an appointment with, input your name, 
I saw Trevor uh, in the chat, so I'll just I'll use Trevor as, as an example. Uh, so book a call with Trevor to see if you qualify. Now they're gonna click on the link that says see if I qualify, and that's gonna take them to the calendar landing page, right? Uh, and a lot of times people will get tripped up on this because they want to skip the instant form. And I would compare this to asking a girl to marry you on the first date, right? They don't know who you are. Um, they don't want to put their information and they don't want to book an appointment with you on a page if they haven't made a micro commitment. And the instant form is the micro commitment that they're making. If they've already given me their information, and again, it's easier for them to give it to me because it's auto-filled and it's on Facebook. Taking the next step to go to the calendar page and uh, book the appointment is so much less of a hurdle to overcome. Uh, and so a few things to consider with your calendar landing page. Your messaging needs to be consistent. This is something a lot of people mess up on because a lot of us agents, we sell multiple products. and We kind of just want to like word vomit on every single prospect, everything that we sell. Uh, but they don't need everything that we sell. And sometimes they do, but oftentimes they're only looking for one thing at a time. And the more information you give them, the more confused they get. So if I see an ad for final expense, you know, for covering my burial, and all of a sudden I click to the landing page and it's talking about IULs, annuities, term products, Medicare, supplements, all this other stuff, I'm confused, right? I thought I was getting into final expense and now you're throwing all these other things on my plate. I'm just going to leave because now this is overwhelming. So your messaging needs to be consistent. There's a, a great marketer out there named Dan Kennedy. Um, great marketer is an understatement. He's probably the best marketer of all time. Uh, if you haven't heard of him, look him up. That's where we get a lot of our information that we use um, whenever we're creating Facebook ads. Uh, it's, it's timeless information, Dan Kennedy stuff is. But one of the things that he says is you need to have one funnel for each product you sell. So if I sell term, I sell final expense, and I sell Medicare, that's a separate ad, a separate calendar page, and a separate funnel for each of those different products because it needs to be consistent. Um, an example that Dan Kennedy uses is orthodontists. So if I see an ad for Invisalign and I go to a page and I'm looking for Invisalign, 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 and all of a sudden I click on a website and it's talking about braces and you know um, teeth fillings, like uh, that's not what I was looking for. I wanted Invisalign. I wanted the stuff that you can't see, right? So now I'm confused and the messaging is inconsistent. Now I'm not going to buy anything. So uh, make sure your messaging is consistent. Also, this is a landing page, not a website. So there's only one action that they can take. Uh, I'm not going to have, you know, a video about who I am and, you know, all these other products that I offer. It's only one action for them to do, uh, which is to book the appointment. That's why it's a calendar landing page. And again, you don't want to overcomplicate this. It's going to serve one function, which is to have them book the appointment. Okay. So the calendar should reinforce you as the agent. Uh, we like to put the agent's headshot, their name, their face all over that page. That way, when they're booking the appointment with you, they are ready to talk to you. Right. They're more likely to show up if they they can put a face to the name, uh, and they are ultimately, you know, you could call them a higher intent lead when they know who they are. Now, if you see this little black box below here, this is a, a link to an example of what a landing page should look like. Um, so if you guys are interested in seeing this, I don't know if I should show it. Um, I don't want to waste y'all's time or anything. But if you're interested in seeing kind of, you know, an example of what a, a calendar landing page would look, uh, just let me know. Leave a comment down below and, and I'll click on it and show you guys what it would look like. Okay, Let's see. I see Johnny just said yes. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and show you guys kind of an example of what the calendar page looks like. So right here, uh, again, this is not like fully built out, but this is just an example. So right here we have like a, a real clear call to action or a real clear uh, headline, get the right life insurance to meet your needs. Um, and then we have a button right here, which is again, a very clear call to action. It says book a call, right? There's one action that they can take. It's short, it's sweet, it's simple, but it converts. Book a call, takes me to the calendar. I can pick a time, pick a time, and then I select it. And then that would take us to the next step. And again, the only goal of the calendar page is to book the appointment. So let's go to step number four, which is the survey. I'm going to show you guys right here because there's actually a survey built into this page. Here we go. 
So we have first name, last name, phone number, address, city, state, postal code, date of birth, who will be your beneficiary, how much coverage do you want to apply for? And so, again, this is one of the things that people, people will skip steps, right? Now I'm making it a little bit difficult for them to give me their information, right? I don't want it to be hard to become a lead, but I want it to be a little bit hard to book an appointment because if I'm blocking out a set uh, time in my calendar for them to, to talk to me, that's not only, I'm not only like collecting data, but I'm setting aside time to talk to you. So if I'm going to do that, you need to have some intent, right? I want you to be more of a serious buyer. But what people kind of get tripped up on is we're not only salespeople, but we're marketers. And so um, when people will do the survey first or they'll do the landing page first, we don't want it to be hard for them to become a lead because not everybody is the highest intent buyer at that moment. But as agents, we all know that everybody needs this stuff at one point or another. So maybe I'm not ready to you know, go in and put all of my information in and say why I want life insurance and who my beneficiary is going to be and how much coverage I want. Maybe I don't know that. Maybe I'm not ready to do all that. But I am interested in hearing more about it. So if I can collect all the people that want to hear more about it on the front end with the instant form, I can remarket to them with drip campaigns uh, through email, through text. I can call them. I can set follow-ups with them. Uh, I can talk to them on the phone and convince them why they need it now. But if I make them have to be ready to buy now to become a lead, I'm basically shooting myself in the foot because I'm losing a lot of a lot of prospects that could be nurtured into um, ready to go buyers, right? And so the survey, uh, this is where you can you know again start to interrogate them because if you're setting aside time, then you know there needs to be some more intent behind that. So what I'll usually do is I'll reconfirm their name their email, their phone, uh, their address, their beneficiary. And then I'm also going to ask a self-qualifying question like, why do you want life insurance? That way, whenever I hop on the phone with them, I can uh, you know, kind of harken back to that question that they answered. So if they give me an objection, it's like, well, hey, you know, when you filled out the form that you, you said that uh, you really wanted life insurance because you didn't want your daughter Susie to have to pay for that debt that you took out uh, when you bought the Camaro on your social security check, right? And I can kind of pin them down and and uh, hold them to that answer that they gave me over the phone earlier, or uh, they gave me on the survey earlier. Now, again, the only goal of the survey is just to collect information um, and uh, solidify that appointment. So let's get to number five. This is automation, right? We're talking about robots here. Uh, We have a little personification of the uh, automation within our CRM. Uh, This is a robot just meditating, you know, harnessing his... AI powered energy, uh, or if you kind of want to put a more friendly face, a less creepy interpretation to the robots, we got Wally. And yes, Wally will text all of your leads to remind them of their appointment, right? So you're going to cut down on no shows, uh, depending on you know if you want to interpret robots as that way or just as Wally. Totally up to you. But the goal of the automation is just to get the prospect to show up to the appointment, right? Um, so whenever we're talking about automations, in particular with this funnel. Uh, we're speaking about the appointment reminders flow because this is assuming they've already booked the appointment. Uh, so we're sending them a text 24 hours, one hour, and 10 minutes before the appointment. That way there's no way they could forget it. We're also texting them a photo of your insurance license so they know you're not you know, lying to them or you're not some you know, scammer or whatever. And then we're also going to send them a selfie of you, right? Because it's one thing to no-show a faceless Joe Schmo. But it's another thing to no show some you know, really nice guy that's texting you, sending you a picture of his license and sending you a picture of himself, right? Um, and yeah, uh, go ahead and drop a comment, guys, if you guys are already using automations. If not, this is definitely something that you need to hop on. Uh, the reason why is the secret to success, there's no secret to success. The secret is it's just consistency. But the problem that a lot of people run into uh, is consistency can be exhausting right? It's easy to text everybody back for a day, but try doing that for a year when you have 4,000 leads. I mean, you might be able to do it, but it's going to be really, really tiresome and very time consuming. And that's what automation does, right? Um, So yeah, I see a couple comments in here about uh, using automation. That's great. Trevor, uh, that's awesome. I knew that you were using automation, but it's great to hear that you're still using it. (laughs) Uh, I got Shannon is using Calendly and Zapier. 
Uh, so that's, it's not a bad way to do everything. There's, uh, there are easier ways. Um, I'm assuming if you're using Zapier, you're probably using a Google spreadsheet. That's where it gets a little bit tricky because organizing leads can get tough when you're using a spreadsheet. Um, you're not able to move them across different stages in a pipeline, uh, which is very helpful for organizing. Uh, so that's definitely something that we could help you out with. Uh, we have a free trial to the CRM. I'll get Julian to drop a link in the comments to that, uh, but we'll touch more on the CRM a little bit later here. Uh, but yeah, this is what the automation looks like. Um, the appointment reminders are going to get people to show up to your appointments and decrease those no-shows so you're not wasting time. And again, the only goal of the automation here is just to get the uh, prospect to show up to the appointment. So what comes next, right? We've talked about the five ingredients. Well, the sixth ingredient is you, right? As a salesperson, what more could you possibly ask for than qualified high intent prospects who show up to auto booked appointments, right? That is literally the definition of a layup or dare I say a slam dunk, right? This is you right here and the ball is the deal. It's a slam dunk, baby. So what does it look like all together, right? So as you can see, it kind of looks like a funnel, if you will. I would say it definitely looks like a funnel. But right here we have the Facebook ad, right? This is what's being shown on the Facebook platform to thousands of people. Um, if you scale it up, thousands of people a day. Uh, maybe tens of thousands if you're you know really ramping your ads up, which is great. At that point, you're probably going to want to build out an agency. Um, from the Facebook ad, we go down to the instant form. That's where we're collecting everybody's information. Um, some of them will click through the landing page. Some of them won't. And if they don't, I still have their information and I can call them. Uh, I can text them. I can email them. And I can you know get them on the phone. Uh, after the, the instant form, they're going to go to the landing page to uh, see if they qualify. Um, some of those people are going to fill out the survey and become an appointment. And then some of those people are actually going to show up to the appointment and turn into sales. As you see, we have the dollar signs coming out of the funnel. Now I have all these numbers next to it. Um, we're going to touch back on knowing your ingredients or knowing your numbers. Uh, with the Facebook ad, you'll typically see about a 5% click rate if your ad is uh, made correctly. That's what we've seen pretty standardly across multiple campaigns is a 5% click rate. Of those people that click on your ad, about two and a half percent of, or about half of them, so two and a half percent is half of five percent, about half of them will actually fill out the form and become a lead. And when they fill out the instant form, uh, they're added into my CRM. So if they don't go to the landing page, they're getting an auto booking text, right? And that is going to text them different times that are available on my calendar. Um, it's going to you know confirm back and forth with them. It basically sounds like they're talking to you except um, as if you were uh, a robot that's texting them and you don't have to do anything, right? So it's confirming appointment times. Um, a percentage of those people, uh, again, like a lot of people are gonna fill out your form, but they won't click through to your landing page and that's completely fine. Uh, that's where a lot of your sales will be made is from people that don't auto book an appointment. But if they do click through, which we've seen about half of the people uh, that fill out the form will click through to the page and then about 30%, 25 to 30% will become an auto book, right? So about one in four to one in three will auto book appointments. Again, this depends on the campaign, uh, but from ones that we've run, uh, even on nationwide campaigns, we've seen about 25 to 30% uh, percent booking rate. And you know, just by the nature of the insurance business, you'll get about a 50% show rate. Uh, that's on triple dialing. If you dial six times back to back, that number would probably go up, but we don't dial six times, we dial three times. So we've seen about a 50% show rate. And again, depending on how many, you know, how good of a salesperson you are and how many of those people you close, uh, you will you know, close a percentage of those people that show up to your appointments. But I wanna touch back on people that fill out your instant form but don't go to the landing page. Uh, because this is like, this is the, the largest bucket of prospects uh, that you will have in your CRM, right? Uh, and this is where the automations really become powerful because you get the auto books uh, and then you'll call through those leads yourself, right? There's still some active work that comes into this, uh, but whenever these people fill out the form, if they don't book, they're added into a new lead tab, right? So what we'll do is we'll call those three people three times back to back and then we'll move them over to uh, a tab that says that we've called them three times. And we're working through all of the leads as they come in. And ultimately our goal is to call them either 15 times and they never answer or never respond, 
Uh, or, you know, obviously we get them on the phone, we're able to set an appointment, we're able to uh, close them on a policy. Now, if we've called them 15 times in a row and we still haven't been able to get everything or, you know, uh, get an answer, we drag them into a column called unresponsive lead. Um, what that does is it will shoot them a text. It'll be like, hey, uh, you know, Julian, I was just checking. You had filled out a form on Facebook about the final expense program or about the life insurance. Uh, I hadn't been able to contact you. I'd called you, you know, a few times and just haven't been able to get a hold of you. Is this something that you're still serious about? Because uh, otherwise I'm going to have to close your file and take you off the list, right? And this is all automated. You're not doing any of this. And then if they say, yeah, you know, I'm not serious about this. Cool. We're, we're not going to waste any more time. We're not going to waste any more texts or emails on this person. And it's going to close out their file. Now, uh, it'll close out their file and take them off of your opportunity tab, but they'll still be on your email list. So one of the automations we have is it sends them an email a week for a year. So 52 emails um, across, you know, one a week for a year. So if at any time they change their mind or they're like, oh shoot, hey, I need life insurance. Um, hey, I need life insurance. Uh, you're going to be the first person that they think of, right? And so they can click and book an appointment with you and then they're thrown right back into your system. Uh, so that is uh, what the CRM does and the automations will do to book the appointment. And so if they fall out at any point, we got this little stick figure falling out of our funnel. Uh, we have those automations that will, uh, will, that will put them back on track. So as we can see, now our stick figure is back on the funnel. So we've covered, you know, we've covered quite a lot in this training. Um, it's kind of like drinking water from a fire hose here. Uh, but I want to give you guys an option because there's a lot of people that will take this information. And for one reason or another, they won't take action. Maybe it's because it's overwhelming. It's a lot to do. Maybe they don't have time. Uh, maybe, you know, there's a whole, whole number of factors that could be why you wouldn't uh, go ahead and set this up for yourself, uh, which is why we offer a done for you option, right? Uh, sometimes you just want to take the guesswork out of it and have the experts do it, which is totally fine. We get it. Uh, we've been doing this for a while uh, and, you know, we're pretty good at it. I don't want to, you know, toot my own horn, but uh, we're, you know, where we are for a reason with, with Facebook ads. Um, but we can set the entire thing that we just described for you the Facebook ad, the instant form, the landing page, the survey, and the automations. We can do all of that for you if you want. Uh, we'll give you proven ads uh, using a proven, proven framework um, from the type of ads that we use in our own campaign. Uh, we'll even write the ad copy. You'll have copywriters writing the ad copy for you. Uh, we'll create the headlines. We'll create really attention-grabbing headlines that have worked for us. Uh, and then getting more to like the technical side, we'll set up Facebook for you, right? So we'll create your instant form, uh, we'll create your Facebook campaign, we'll set up the targeting, we'll set you with the right budget uh, so that you're not you know, overspending or underspending on Facebook, uh, the targeting so that you're, you know, you're showing your ad to the right people, and then we'll create a landing page for you. Uh, it's going to have your headshot and your branding on it. It's going to be similar to the one that we showed you. Uh, we'll adjust it to fit your brand and fit the product that you're selling. Uh, and then we're also going to create the automation so that you can get auto booked appointments, right? Uh, now, if anybody is interested in this, I know Julian introduced John earlier on in the call. He's going to be handling all of our done for you accounts. So if this is something that you're interested in learning more about, I'm going to drop this link. I'm going to drop this link down below in the, uh, in the chat. Um, and John, if you're in there, say hi. So everyone knows who you are. Um, I'm going to drop this in the chat down here. But yeah, this will be to uh, book an appointment with John. Uh, he'll answer any questions that you guys have about you know, how the done for you works or pricing or anything like that. Um, I'm not going to mention pricing on the call uh, just because I'm planning on posting this on YouTube. Uh, we're planning on posting this on YouTube and uh, we may raise the prices at a certain point. And so I don't want to be like, hey, it's going to be, you know, three grand or something and then, you know, by the time the video comes out, someone sees it two years later and we're charging you know, more for it just because the value of it has gone up. Um, but we are running a promotion right now. It's $500 off the normal price. Uh, so if you are interested in getting a done for you option, uh, it'll end this Friday by the end of the week. So if this is something that you're, you're, you're interested in learning more about, uh, click that link and get on John's calendar. It's free to book the appointment with him and talk to him and and again, he'll be able to answer any questions that you have about what that service looks like 
or uh, what it would look like for your business specifically. So I'm gonna, normally we're, we're doing about 30 minutes uh, for these lives, but I wanna give you guys a few minutes to ask any questions that you have. Uh, so if you guys do have any questions about uh, you know, the secret formula that we covered, the five different ingredients, I'll kind of run through those again. Um, feel free to ask them down below because we're gonna have a few minutes for questions before we wrap everything up. And again, uh, you know, if you have any questions, comment below. Uh, or if you found this training helpful, also comment below. We want to know if, if you guys enjoyed this, if you got value from it, if we should make more like this, or you know, maybe we're totally off base and we need to start talking about something different. We don't know unless you tell us. So <laughs> drop a comment down below. Um, feedback is, is always good to have. Let's see. I know sometimes Facebook will take a second for uh, those comments to come through. Um, and I think there's maybe a little bit of a delay in the uh, in the video, so the comments come through a little bit late. Uh, so Mark said, thanks, very nice. Awesome, Mark, we really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for hopping on today. Um, I think you might be new to the group, so welcome, welcome. Uh, we're, we're glad to have you and, and help you scale your business and get everything uh, you know sorted out for you. So I got Mark said it was helpful. I uh, see so we have a couple of the uh, the regulars on here that usually hop on the chats or hop on these lives. So uh, thank you, James. I see you pretty much every week. Thanks for hopping on. Um, Simon is always on. Um, let's see. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny, for hopping on. We'll see you later tonight. Look forward to helping you scale your campaign up. Thanks, Trevor. Dude, you're, uh, you are very much appreciated. Um, let's see some of the new faces. I think Larry is new to the live training. What's up, Larry? Shannon, what's going on? Welcome. I don't think I've seen you on one of these before. Apologies if, if you have been, but I, I did not recognize the name. Uh, Bessie, thanks for hopping on. Let's see. Anybody else? Jessica, uh, I actually just approved you onto the group and you hopped onto the first Facebook live training, so you are in the right direction. Welcome, welcome. We're excited to have you and excited to help you scale up your business. Um, let's see, that looks like just about everyone that I'm seeing here. Mark says he spoke to John today. He was very helpful. Dude, that's good to hear. I'm glad that we don't have to fire him because uh, he was hard to find. Cool. Well, it doesn't look like we have uh, too many questions here. Uh, thank you guys for hopping on. Um, it seems like this training was helpful. If you guys have anything else that you want to see from us in the next one, uh, we've kind of just been like uh, brainstorming these ideas and coming up with them on the fly. But if you guys have ideas that you want us to talk about in the next training, uh, you can either drop them in the live chat right now uh, or you can drop them in the Facebook group. Just be like, hey, you know, I have an idea of something I would like to see on the next Facebook live. It's blank, blank, blank. And uh, we will uh, we will definitely implement that as long as it's feasible and it's not something ridiculous. Um, but yeah, thank you guys to everyone uh, who hopped on. I'm going to go ahead and end this live training. But again, I'm glad this was helpful. And uh, if any of you guys want to learn more about a done-for-you setup, I will paste that link in the group so that you guys can click on it. If you missed it, you know maybe the comments went by too fast and you weren't able to click on that link. Uh, we're going to drop it in the Facebook group as well so that you guys can uh, set up a call with John. Uh, clearly, he's helpful because Mark said so. So uh, yeah, let's see. Simon said, spoke with John this morning, was wondering when you're going to start creating something with IULs and FIAs. Uh, so that's a good question. We, uh, we actually are doing an annuity funnel for one guy. Um, it's not something that we're like crazy experienced in yet. So I don't want to like offer it on mass yet. Um, we like to only put out things that we know that we can do well. That's why the main thing we've been doing is final expense. We're getting into Medicare and ACA. Uh, Medicare, there's a lot of compliance to jump through, so we're we're kind of like we're we're being a little bit slow to get that out, just because we want to do it right. If we're going to do it, I don't want to have you know some email that uh, somebody lost their license because we screwed up their ads with Medicare. Uh, similar thing with annuities. There's not as much compliance that goes with it, uh, but with IULs, what I would tell you is we can do like general term campaigns. We actually are doing one for Johnny Nitafan. Um, and that's something that we're working on scaling out. Uh, you will find a lot of IULs on the general term leads, right? And so like with IULs, 
uh, I'll give you just like, you know, a little, a little value nugget right here. If you wanted to do IULs, um, that works best with like videos. So if you're doing like a kind of a video talking about what the product is and like selling them on infinite baking, uh, banking, not baking. Um, <laughs> but if you're like doing like a video talking about infinite banking and selling them on that and explaining the whole, uh, the whole process behind that, uh, that tends to work really well with IULs. I know somebody who's having a lot of success with, with that, but yeah, Simon, I would tell you, uh, either do like a term. If you're doing, if you're going to do a done for you, I would either do a term or a final expense, and then you're going to find IULs and FIAs off of that. But leading with IULs and FIAs, uh, it can work, but you're going to get a lot more leads uh, for a much lower cost with just like a, a term campaign or a final expense campaign and then going for the cross sales from that. But yeah, that's the last question that I saw here. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and cut this training off. Thank you again to everybody who hopped on. Uh, we will be doing the exact same thing next Tuesday at 530 Eastern. So we will see you all there. Peace.